Hey everybody, this is Dylan Freeman, uh, the editor for newsforusonline.com. We're here with actress Tamla Jones, and Ms. Jones, we're here, we're glad to have you. Thank you for having me. What's it mean for you to be part of Super Bowl week? Um, it was like actually a little last minute thing. Really? Okay. Yeah, I, I actually came out here to, uh, to present at the Soul Bowl Super Bowl celebration. Right. That was really nice. Okay. And um, then I decided to come and stay and talk to you guys. Well, I'm thank glad you so that much. I did. <laughs> <laughs> talk about your, your latest project, Ordinary Angels. I'm so excited about this movie. It's really dear to me because um, it's based on a true story. And uh, I love the story. It's a love story, but it's not a romance. The love is within the community. Okay. And um, a woman, it's a family, um, the wife dies of a rare liver disease. Family's left with all these bills, outrageous, as you know they can be. Right. Um, and then she had two daughters. The baby ends up having the same rare liver disease. They can't keep her in the hospital because they still have unpaid bills. Okay. And it takes this one woman to read the story in the paper to decide, I'm going to fix this. And it was challenging. And at the end, it was the entire community that got together that was able to help save this girl's life, to help get her to where she needed to go to get her liver transplant. And the fact that it's a true story was so inspirational to me. And I think it's a great story for right now. I think the world needs the story. We need to have faith and understand that we will get past this. We need to come together in our communities and be there for one another. And we need to give each other grace. We've all been through a traumatic time. That pandemic caused a lot of mental illness. It caused a lot of ruptures in families. And, and it just did a doozy on us. And I feel like this film will give people hope and a different outlook on it. So tell, tell us about your character and who do you play? And uh... <laughs> <laughs> My character is Rose, and she's the best friend of Hilary Swank's character. Okay. Um, Rose is no nonsense, but Rose is a very dear friend. She will be there for you, but she is not there for the BS. But she okay. will call you money. Um, but she's a ride or die. Okay. And she is a friend that we all need. We need someone. Okay. I'm not going to let you get away with anything, but I will support you on things that are important, that are meaningful. So where were you able to pull that, um, for that role? Where were, you, where, where were you able to pull that from? I would have to say I owe that to my grandmother. Okay. My grandma, God rest her soul, Olivia Laverne Jones, was like that. She was a just woman. She, everybody was welcome to her home. She fed anybody that needed to be fed. Strangers at Thanksgiving would come in because they didn't have nowhere else to go. Willing to help everybody, but if you did something you didn't have no business doing, she's going to sit down and talk to you. We're going we're gonna to iron this out. You're not going to do that again. Okay? Now, why did you do that? Right. And that's how Rose is. You know, why are you doing this? Why do you have to do it? And if it made sense and it seemed like it was a positive thing, Rose would go for it. But if it's not, and it's something that you're doing to cover up something else that was negative, we're not doing it. Right. And that was my grandma. Okay. But do you see a little bit of yourself in I definitely the... do. Okay. I am a ride or die friend. <laughs> I will be there for you through thick and thin. And I will call you on your stuff. I'm not as hardcore as, as Rose. I might go along with your BS for a little while before I call you on it. Because I want to see why, why, you know. And I don't judge. And I love that about Rose. She's not a judgmental person. She just cares. So this is a tearjerker, right? You're gonna, you're gonna laugh. Yeah. You are gonna be like, yes, <laughs> and you will cry. Okay. But the fact that it is based on a true story, I think that we all need those emotions for right now. And I think that you're gonna leave the theater with such an elevation in energy and positivity. Talk about your journey as an actress. Where are you now today? Um, and what are some of the lessons you've learned along the way as an actress? 
Well, I've been doing this since I was 14. I'm a form song, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> um, and I, I have learned a lot. I've learned that this is a business, you know, because when I started, I was a kid. So it was all, oh, I just shoot a movie, I'm going to do a TV show. This is a business. Time is money, and money is time. Um, you need to be serious and grounded about your work. When you, your work doesn't start when you, they say action, your work starts when you get out of your car and you get on set. Your energy is the reason why you will work again and again or not. You have to have pleasantry, you have to know your mind, you have to come in. None of that diva too, that doesn't <laughs> work. You can have it, but you won't work as much as you can, you know. Um, I learned a lot from everybody that I worked with. Jennifer Lewis is somebody that I worked with. I, I went to so many different acting classes and, and workshops, but I learned the most important ingredient to it all from Jennifer Lewis. We were shooting with brothers, and we all had a, a scene, a, a female scene, all the girls, and she made us rehearse it. And as we went the first two times, she said, do you believe what's coming out of your mind? Because I don't. Wow. I was like, how dare you? But but no, not how dare you. Because she was right. And when we rehearsed it and we got that scene down, it, it moved and it flowed like water. And I take that with me on every job. And I make sure that what comes out of my mouth is believable. If I believe it, you gonna believe it. It's just been a lot of talk about challenges that black actresses deal with in Hollywood. Um, where do you stand at? What are the challenges that black actresses, you know, face today? What Taraji P. Henson said was, was true. Um, you have to fight for your work. And we don't get paid the same as Caucasian actresses or other race actresses. We get paid the lowest. Um, and it's been like that forever. It's, it's not anything new. What I do understand about the business is, we didn't start this business. You can't come in and tell people how to run their business. But we have a union, so we can fight for fairness through that union, and that's what we do. I don't know if the union's gonna cover us black actresses or we're gonna have to band together and get it done, but if we do, I'm, I'm for the banding together. Okay. I'll be there. However, I tricked myself to leaving the money part alone and making it more about the parts. And I've dedicated my time to other black actresses, or black filmmakers, African American or of other uh, color nationalities, brown, you know. Um, when they get out of film school, if you want me or any other actresses or actors, I'll come and do your, your project for free to help you get a leg up and hopefully by the time you get to where I am, things would have changed. So I make it about the art, not the money. The wood. Why does that really resonate still so many years later? You know what I think about? There's all, there's been all these teen movies, right? But the wood is the only African American team. And it shows us in our childhood and the way we thought growing up and our experiences growing up. And still, some of the experiences are the, for the kids of today. Right. So I, I feel like that movie is timeless because you had a story of growing up, you know, a story of being raised in Inglewood, in Los Angeles, California, and what it was like. And those boys that were young, those boys are at every school right. all over the world. And I really feel that's why the film still registers today. Do we need more of those? We do. Why aren't there more of those? Because the powers that be green light what they want to see. Um, we can come in and pitch and, and do our best, but if it's not what they want as far as the programming, then it doesn't get made. What would your message be to young people wanting to get into uh, theater or uh, acting? Be prepared to work hard. It's not easy. It looks easy, we make it look easy, but there's a lot of work that goes into it, a lot of long hours. 
please take your acting classes. Please do the workshop so that you can know when you get to set what everything is and what everyone's talking about. Please be okay with the word no, because you are going to hear that. I just heard it last week. No, we're going to go with somebody else. It never stops. And please don't think because you've made it to a certain level that you don't have to audition anymore. You should always want to audition. Meryl Streep, one of the best actresses who's won I don't know how many Oscars, still has to audition. That's pretty great. So I don't... I, I just want everyone to look at it. Yes, it is a job, but you should enjoy what you're doing. But you should also be aware of the guidelines and what is expected of you when you show up. The last question I wanted to ask you, you have a Super Bowl pick? I suck. <laughs> I switched while I was here. I had one team when I came in and now I'm with the 49ers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go 49ers, right? Go 49ers. But the thing is, I'm not really a big sports girl. I just, I make the food and you guys yell at the TV. I cook <laughs> all the food and put everything where y'all need. I feel you, refill your drinks. You guys yell, I yell, get them. I just, I've always had my head buried in a script or a book. I've never really been able to get involved in sports. And when I was in high school, I went to John Marshall Fundamental, 6 through 12. It's all about academics. Okay. Sports, we lost every homecoming, every game. Homecoming game, whatever game, we lost. Every sport, we sucked. Wow. So I didn't get a chance to love sports the way everybody else did. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ms. Jones, thank you so much for stopping by and taking your time, and we wish you well on your, on your movie. Thank you Ordinary so much. Angels. Yes. Look forward to seeing it. Thank you. Due out February 23rd. Right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.